Uh, half more than me, there's uh, temperature below minus six. It's when you feel as cold and they go into the ice yeah. and wings. The ice in the wings before taking Yeah, Beautiful, look at this. We couldn't see this yesterday. We got here in the dark and the snow was so thick. We couldn't see anything yesterday. We could barely see the road in front look of us. Look at these yesterday. icicles, look. Everything Whoa. is just frozen. I tell you what, it was only minus three with a wind chill of maybe minus ten yesterday. But I gotta show you it was freezing. There you go, they're plowing the tarmac again. <laughs> Mate, I tell you what, that's that's why didn't it look that yesterday is the wide, day. Bro. Oh no! Holy Mate, that was wide! Man <laughs> Bit of a brain trazer moment. We didn't <laughs> want to end up in that field. Look, that looks like a lovely mag, eh, mate? Off them rocks. Frozen to hell, though. Oh my god, he just bit his boot. Do not want to get your finger in there. I'm going to give up trying to pick this guy up. He just bit my boot. Welcome to Bodo. First trip of the session. I don't know how big it is. Quite the big fish, I think, though. I think it's probably about six pounds, five pounds. Welcome to Bodo. Hopefully, the first of many. Let's get this one back and let's keep fishing. Let's just have a quick Lovely look at his good teeth. Run on this fish. Lovely. Look at the teeth on that thing. I don't know the whether you can see it. Teeth are crazy. Anyway, he's bleeding. I, let's get him back. I don't want it to latch onto my finger. Got to give him a bit of a throw from here, I think. Ready? Hoppa. Here he is. First raw fish, first pieces of the trip. Seagulls just joining us, celebrating the first fish. Getting mobbed by seagulls. Amazing. What a glorious day. Right, well, uh, first day of fishing on this different mag than what we fished last night. Like, uh, Owen has hit into his first ever wolf fish, which was a lovely surprise. I'm still struggling for the bite, but I mean, have a look at this for the backdrop. <laughs> look at that. The, w the snow don't know which way it wants to come from, but at the moment, with a view like that, I don't think I really care. And hopefully the rod will go off now while I'm talking to you. Here we are, first cast this evening for a win in less than five minutes. <laughs> Didn't even get my second rod out, just added it on. Now, today we've had a slow, slow day. Now to come here, first cast, this is what we come to flip in Norway for, man. That's got to be a double figure card right there. Woohoo, <laughs> look at that! Well done, son. Look at Very that, nice. Sunshine. Good gaffing, brother. Oh, have a look at that for the gaff. You look like I swam fish. in the sea and gaffed it out myself. What a fish. Thank you, Bodo. Well done, son. Right. Well done, son. Cheers, right then. Hopefully we'll have some more, because I still can get a bite. Here we go. Did you just fart? Look I've at that. To, I've managed to get in on a bit of action. After, uh, after struggling. Watch it Owen catch a load of fish. Hopefully you just relax for two minutes so we can show you the, the size of it. I see it's pushing ten pound. Oh yeah, that's a ten pound. Nice big head on him. It's about it's long, it's fatter than mine, but not quite as long I wouldn't say. Can do, can curl that tail. Anyway, yeah. There we go. We're really starting to cook on some gas now. We struggled for tide run the first evening we got here on a mag that we fished. But ever since we found this run, we seem to be getting bites. And I mean, this is our first couple of casts. Uh, it is a cracking fish, then. Nice big kiss on the nose. And I think I'm going to release it. So if you want to follow me down and 
I'll try and put it back here. Rugby Golda. As you can see, studs are a must here. It has been blizzard and blowing. What's that? Yeah, ratchets are on. Hang on. Hang on. He looks healthy. He looks healthy to me. It didn't get gaffed, so that's a beautiful looking fish. Let him go in. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, that water's much deeper than it looks, right by there. Off the mark then, Sid. Yeah. Off the mark then, Sid. A few more of them will be overjoyed. I'm absolutely buzzing to be off the mark. And that's, we've just seen some northern lights as well. As we were looking at the last fish. Oh, in fact, poked up in the sky. I thought, bloody hell. Happy days. What more can you ask for? Apart from a gigantic alibi. Wait there, Tom? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah? No, I'm not. Alright. I'm gonna put the camera down. Oh, yeah, a bit of wind. Yeah. Right, yo. Nice. Here we are, like everybody. I've just managed to land myself my first core fish of the trip. Didn't get this one on the spinner, sadly. This came on some bait, obviously. It's dag. Nearly lost it on that ledge that we've been losing things on probably about 15 20 yards out but luckily it tangled itself up on my second rod yeah i knew it was it wasn't a card but i could saw that tail flap yeah i mean we could see the fork tail yeah beautiful but fish let me just wipe a bit of that, that snow off uh -huh. so there she is that is a lovely fish that is a lovely fish that's my first cold fish in real life i've ever seen Great fish. Absolutely ecstatic with that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hopefully plenty more to come, man. He's only a religious man when he's fishing. Tied, tied when just picked up again. He went slack for a, for a while again. Absolutely no bites. As soon as the run was back here, we're back on the fish. I can't fold it. Right, we're going to take a couple of photos and try and get it back. Or not, looking down the top. <laughs> now, this one looks like it might be going for dinner now, sadly. But anyway, Great what a fish. fish to catch, man. Oh days, brother, that could be a bet. That could be a bet. We might want to tighten that drag, brother. Oh, you've got to let it go, bruv. Hello. First first proper run of the trip. Right, right I'm going to have to get the gaff, so I'm going to set you down here. Hopefully you can see what's going on. Yeah? Had a nice little run at the start. Nice little run at the start. Just be careful because it could be a ledge. Could be it could have it could be a ledge here, we don't know so. Yeah, we have got we're fishing bottom bottoms anyway. So with a bit of luck. How's it feeling? Yeah, it feels... A bit nerve-wracking? Uh, yeah, Get that fish up. I'm worried about my rod. 
steep here. See if we can see a bit of colour. Definitely our little oh, my other line as well. Yeah. Deep right in front there. Dig in, dig in. Ho 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 this is first decent fish of the trip. Right, we got a nice snowy wolf fish here. I've sadly, as oh, you have, just just in the lip there. Look at that. Oh, well Perfect. enough, sir. Well enough. Hang on, let me, let me get him in. I'll get him back. But it's too cold to have him out. Oh, you'll bite me again. I've already been bitten by one of these. I keep moving in front of the camera. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get the fish out. Oh, oh, oh. Right, as you can see. Oh yeah, I'm sure we had the underwater camera on that. Oh god, that froze the hands up. That's how I imagine seeing them all the time. In the water. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, he is anyway. Obviously I lost my uh what we believe may have been the first halibut of the trip. But uh yeah. Plenty of time. <sighs> it's cold today. Back these devils dead as well. My hands are alright though. I'm freezing. Feel my hands. Cut them off then. Eh? Cut them off because the back these devils dead. I'm trying my best to revive this cod. He wasn't out the water very long at all but he's just not going back. Beautiful, beautiful conditioned fish. Beautiful, beautiful colours. He just hasn't got anything in him for some reason. Is that a hard fish to catch, Sin? Oh, Have you been yeah, waiting well, for that? I forgot to put the ratchet on and uh, I was cutting some more bait off, uh, off and up. Oh, we, lovely fish. We was on a bit packing up not long ago. And uh, yeah, I heard a lot of bang, looked over and my flipping rod nearly come off the stand. So I got straight on it. Anyway, lovely condition of fish. You put him back? But I think I'm going to put this one back because he got unhooked and so nicely. Okay. Yeah, I'll come down. They're gonna think you're a very religious man, you know. They're gonna think you're a religious man. Uh, I fish religiously. Right, let me get down there. Give him a nose check, he should be alright. Such a shame we're struggling at the moment. First time fishing this mark since we've arrived. Wonderful day, but it could be better. All we need is some fish. There he is, FB2.
Oh, it's got a bit of a different flavour this time, by the way. Feels like minus 12 today. <laughs> well, to show what the temperature is, it's minus 4, we'd have to count. It's like fishing down Barry. Yeah. Loads colder. Yeah, only in January, look. So far, less fish. <laughs> yeah, there's no dogs to keep us in a. <laughs> there's no dogs to keep us busy here, yeah, sadly. If he was open, the, the cod would be like ever dog fish. But anyway, have a look at that for a view. I don't know whether you can see it on the GoPro, but just across from us here, there's a, a little inlet which leads into the salt stream. And so yeah. I got it, brother, I got it. Yep, we keep it over that ledge, mind. I know, it's hitting the wall. Right, I'm gonna go down there now in a minute, right? The only thing is, it's only fish, there's no lead trailer there. Here it comes, bruv. Whoa, 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 it's on the ledge, let it swim away. Yeah, right, come down the bottom and let it swim. Don't pull our line into the reef. Right there as well. It's a good one and all. Big yeah, get down on the bottom, see if you can, you know, undo it slightly or whatever. Go on, get down there, go to the other side. Got him. Got him. Yeah, boy. Oh, it's a cod. Oh, it's a coddy. <laughs> yes, son. It's like flipping ice down here, you know? It's a tidy one on the... It's a tidy one, brother. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Oh, watch you don't slip. Yeah. That's not annoying. <laughs> <laughs> on the old long tackle, is it, brother? <laughs> Take your leg touch off, bruv. We have been struggling all day. We've been fishing here since the early hours. Oh, I haven't had a single bite on the bait. And now it's on the jig. Happy flipping days, thank God <laughs> for that. Little casting jig, man, <laughs> little pink and white. Right. Do you want a photo? Yeah, I'll get a little photo of him when we're getting back. Here we are, look. We fished this mark now maybe three times on this trip. We had to run from one of these beauties, I believe, the first day and we lost it. And uh, yeah, we went to fish a different mark this morning, but the wind was up, so we was humming and airing. Then our second choice mark was taken, so back on the flipping steps we had, and I'm so happy. Nice fish. Yeah. It's definitely over the 80 centimeters. I thought he was gonna flap away then. So that's your... Yes. My target is achieved. The legal fish, happy days. Would you say that's 80? Should we measure it? Oh, definitely over 80. Happy days. I'm sorry that we haven't got the action on camera, but it's so difficult with GoPros dying. See, we, uh, we could actually add it to the end of the one that we lost, <laughs> couldn't we? Stunning. Let's give him a bit of time to make sure he goes off. Because he is actually in size to take us. He's 90 centimetres, we measured him. I don't want to let him go, look, because it's a waste. We keep it otherwise. Look at that for the tail, look. Got a paddle. That's where that power comes, that's where those runs come from. Yeah, just talk us through the run then, Tom, how, how it went. Well, I mean... So, I finally put the Bodo video together. 
it's been over a year since we've been there. We went on the 2nd of March 2019. Uh, it's now the 6th of April 2020 amidst the coronavirus outbreak. Everybody sat at home. Everybody self-isolating. So I thought, I'm going to put this video together and get it out there. Try and give you guys something to watch. Um, it's been far too long. I just want to say that the reason why I never did put the video together way back when is because um, we only really got a small amount of footage and the reason we only got a small amount of footage was um, the cold was absolutely killing the camera batteries. Maybe something I should have thought of before we went out there, just didn't even cross my mind. So like 20, 25 seconds was like the maximum duration you could get on the camera and then after that it just got worse and worse and worse. So um, we just, just couldn't get the footage. I, I had really big intentions of doing like a vlog series, doing a video every single day we was out there and putting it out like a seven part um, sort, sort of series, but um, it just didn't pan out that way, unfortunately. But now it's been there, it's been put together. You've seen what little footage we have. It's a bit disjointed. There's no sort of story on there. It's just basically from footage from when we left until, um, until basically we didn't get any more. Uh, in fact, I think that's only till about three days in the footage on there and beyond that it was just such a nightmare with the camera that we just wasn't even bothering um anyway i wanted to do this little bit at the end because i wanted to put a little bit more context to the video um and give you guys a bit of information about flying the bodo about the costs about what we took the gear we used um so that if you want to go then hopefully this is going to help you uh, first of all, I'll say that who we went with. We went with uh, a guy called Simon Smith. Um, you'll be able to find him on Facebook. Loads of people go up with him. He's chock a block all the time. And his house is in Bodo, which I think they class as Northern Norway. Um, it's probably like two thirds of the way up if you look at it on the map. Um, great guy. The the accommodation is actually in the basement of his house. So him and his family live live upstairs. And you'll get the basement at the bottom. Um, and that is £500 for the week. But I think it could sleep. It might sleep up to six people. Don't quote me on that. I think definitely up to four people in there. So if you think that 500 quid for the week. Or that's how much it was when we went. Um, if you had to split that between four of you. It's not that expensive. But only me and Tom went. So we split it between us. So it was 250 quid each. Um, but even so. We actually went to um, Bodo for, for, for quite cheap. And I'll, and I'll get into that in a minute. I just want to say a little bit about the accommodation that we stayed in. Accommodation was fantastic. All the help I had from Simon Smith, I was talking to him through Facebook all the time. Always getting back to me, not a problem. Um, and the accommodation itself, like I say, is, is uh, second to none. Especially for the price. I mean, you, you know, I'd, I'd have paid a lot more for it. You know, you get you get your own entrance down into the... Um, down into the basement flat, it's got lovely windows and views looking out over the sea and the cliffs, which is just fantastic, especially when they're covered in snow. Um, big, big, big apartment. You know, you've got a big flat screen telly, corner sofa, bedrooms, kitchen, big bathroom, um, a room of freezers, it's got all extra gear in there, um, and heated floors, which is lovely when you come back after a really cold, long day to get in there on those heated floors was really fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's the accommodation. Really, really great. Worth every single penny. Next, we're going to look at the flights. So we flew out with Norwegian. Um, the flights were about 195 quid each. That included a 20 kilogram baggage allowance. So um, we had one of those each, but obviously we needed to take out um, all our fishing gear as well. So we took a bazooka tube, um, the bazooka tube pro. Uh, we took that out with us um, because that's classed as fishing equipment or sports equipment. That was a little bit more expensive. I think that cost about forty quid to add on. Um, but then the other bit of extra luggage we took was um, a big cooler box, which we filled. I'd say half with bluey, and the rest of it we filled with our own foods. We took our own food out. That's a major, major tip. Everybody knows it. I think. But um, take your own food, because if you don't, it's shockingly expensive out there, like like amazingly expensive out there. So we took our own food. We took things like tuna. We took things like mints, corned beef, pasta, 
couple of soups. We took the we took the works, big blocks of cheese. We took the works out with us, and we ate really well when we were there. All that fit into the cooler box, uh, and because um, that was only twenty kilos, and it wasn't really oversized, although it was quite stocky, um, that was just classed as an extra bag. So that that cost twenty five quid, I think it was, to add on to the um, to the flight. So if you think of it per person, we're at about five hundred quid per person now uh, to go, and then. Um, on top of that then the final thing that you've got to pay for is your car now in the past I have gone with cheaper rental services when I've gone abroad to other places and I've got stung every single time with all these extra insurances and bits and bobs they scare you into taking out um, so we went with Hertz um, just beware that if you're on the bigger cars you've got to have a credit card I don't have a credit card but we got lucky I could only rent um, a Golf Estate sort of size car um, but when we got there, they didn't have one, so we ended up getting a big, sort of, um, uh, like an SUV sort of style car we ended up getting. And don't worry, they always come winter ready with studded, t- studded tyres and all those things. Um, and I think the car hire was about 250 quid for the week as well. So, what are we at now? We're about 600 and... In total, it was about 700 quid per person to go, to go out there. Now, I did have to buy a pair of grubs as well, which were 100 quid. Um, but if you've already got the gear, you're looking at about, to go, the time of year we went, uh, which was early March, you're looking at about £700 per person. Now, as a side note, Tom did end up going back um, in August of that year, and it ended up costing him a bit more money. Um, car rental, flights, those things were, were a bit more expensive. Um, it's a little note on driving, if we are going to go there that time of year, you do have to be really careful. The first night we got there, we got there in the dark. It was I was driving on the other side of the road, which I've done lots and lots of times, but never with, never with a manual. But um, like I say, it was blizzarding. It was blowing blankets of snow over the road. You couldn't see it. Um, so just be careful when you're out there doing it. Obviously, it's icy and whatever. The first night, it was cold and really, really terrible weather. But we did go fishing that first night, but we didn't manage to stay out for very long. It was really late. We were absolutely knackered and we didn't catch anything. Um. So let's have a look. That's it. So that's that covers flying out there, where we stayed, and driving around. Obviously, you need to rent a car. That goes without saying because you're not going to be able to get back and forth the marks. Because although there is one good mark which you could walk to, um, most of the marks, if you want to make the most of it, you're going to have to rent a car when you're out there. So that covers that. Um, what else should I look at now? Okay. So now when I think about gear, so like I said. Um, if I go through the clothes that we had, I took grubs, they're a bit dirty, this is actually a different pair, these are the uh, 8.5s, um, and I wore two pairs of thick socks with these, and I'm not joking, maybe once or twice I was aware that my feet were there, if you know what I mean, but never once was were they cold, so they were worth every single penny, Tom actually bought the um, Boggs Bozeman's, which actually rated down to colder than this, and he, he loved those as well. Um, this is a different pair to the pair I took. The ones I took were studded, or well, I added the studs. Um, and then top layers, I took the uh, Vast Winterline smock, and the, uh, yeah, the bib and brace, and that again was fantastic as well, because the wind is one of those things that we all know that if the wind's getting through you it's going to kill you off that was great um but i did really layer up underneath it was seriously cold the coldest day we had was minus 15. i'd say the average daytime temperature was like minus four to minus six i'd say the average nighttime temperature was sort of minus eight minus ten um and we were lucky actually we had really sunny weather we had one or two days where it was really blowy and the first day and a half was snowing a lot um, but it was seriously, seriously cold. Like you think it's cold, you know, on a, on a cold winter night, but it was seriously cold. So, like I said, I wore two thick pairs of socks, my grubs. I had on my legs. All I had was one pair of long johns, one pair of sort of like jogging bottoms, and then these. And never, ever, ever felt the cold on my legs once. It was fantastic, completely waterproof, fantastic. And then on my top. Uh, top half I was wearing um, a thermal layer 
Then I had this sort of, um, well, actually, then I had a T-shirt. Then I had this sort of, like, high-necked sort of, like, bit baggy thermal layer. Then I had um, a jumper. Then I had <laughs> a zip-up from the bottom fleece. Then I had that. And uh, that sounds like a lot, but it was seriously cold. And uh, But I never felt cold, apart from my hands, at, at any point when I was there, because we were really geared up for it. We didn't want to... We did not want the cold to put any off us off fishing at any point. So we really layered up. Nothing... Apart from the grubs, we didn't. I didn't buy anything new or extra. It was everything I decided just layers. You know, they're the only thing that I had to spend the extra money on. And then, um, and then hats. One thing I will say about hats is I, I actually took um, two, two bobble hats or two um, beanie hats. I didn't have bobble on, and a, and a buff. And um, sometimes one hat wasn't enough. <laughs> like you, you could feel the cold. So sometimes, some days I was wearing two hats. Um, just to cope with it and you know everybody says like when when your head's warm it does make you feel that little bit more cosy and warm um, yeah and that was it uh, clothes wise um, so just variations of that every single day and that, that's what kept us warm um, what else we talk about rods um, of course you're going out there for big fish we was out there for big fish Tom had been to Norway previously and he'd had his fill of really big cod and he'd had some uh, halibut up to 70 or 60, 60, 70 pound in the past. So Tom was, the whole purpose of his trip was he wanted a big shore caught halibut. Um, so obviously we needed the gear to, to be able to deal with that. But I use Century Tip Tornado Sport Graphexes here in the Bristol Channel for all pretty much all my normal ray fishing, cod fishing, all those things. Use these rods. And they were the rods that I took with me. In fact at the time I only had a Tip Tornado Sport Mark II and one Tip Tornado Sport Graph X. I've since sold a one Mark II and I've now got a pair of Graph X. But they're the rods that I took um and they were never once felt I think the biggest cod I had was uh 16, 17 pounds, something like that. I know compared to some of the giants, that's nothing, but just so you know, didn't once feel undergunned or whatever, it just felt perfect. And also with six ounce leads, um, there's not much in the way of like me mega tide run around those areas. If you're gonna go to the salt, str salt strowman or the strowmans or whatever, where the run is major, things might be different. But just fishing into the sea, open sea there, uh, six ounce lead would be, was absolutely fine, absolutely fine. Uh, Tom took T900s, um, and a couple of Ziplex rods. Um, again, you saw the action you had on that big halibut that we unfortunately lost. That must have been a nice size fish. No idea what sort of size it was, but he caught the one of 18 pound, um, 90 centimeter fish. Um, and the one he had, you know, you could tell was a much, much bigger fish. So rod wise, those were perfect. Anything in that sort of range would be absolutely perfect. Depending on what you're going for, if you're going out there place fishing things like that, that you know you wouldn't need even those rods, but you never know where you're going to catch out there. Uh, real wise, I took um, a pair of BG thirties. Tom took a pair of BG thirties, but he also took out um, an Avet. Avet, uh, can't think what it is. If I remember, I'll put it down in the um, in the description. Um, my BG thirties are loaded up with twenty five pound mono. 80 pound shock leader so really other than the bulk up of of mono um unless you're out maybe toping or whatever i tend i tend to use 18 pound um mainline and 80 pound shock leader you know fishing here so out there it's not a major and, and i use bg30s here all the time now as well i used to use um fathoms all the time so i still got my fathoms but now i just tend to use my bg30s all the time um so it's not massively different. It's a little bit beefed up, but it's not massively different to your normal sort of ray and conger in around the UK. Um, and then rigs and bait. So we used, um, I'd say most of the, most of the time I used uh, pulley rigs or pulley dropper rigs, just depended really. Um, mostly, I'd say mostly um, pulley rigs with a uh, hundred pound line. Um, 
just to account for like even the you know the bigger card they get they got you know you can put your thermal cards with no problem but as they get bigger those teeth do get a little bit worse and they do um wear on the line uh, and obviously for the halibut as well um so that's why we went for the for the hundred pound line uh and we were using eight o uh varavas um bmx extras eight o's might sound big but let me tell you compared to a 15 pound cards gob nothing like we had a couple of cards quite a few cards swallow even you know a panel rig of eight o's and a huge bluey bait completely gone so if we use if we used to use four or five o's i'd imagine we'd come across that issue a lot more regularly than we did so um, and we were out there for big fish, so we, we didn't we wasn't interested in using the smaller hooks anyway. Um, I know a lot of people use the catfish hooks and whatever, but you do need a big strong hook, and they did the job perfectly. Um, and that they were the rigs that we used all the time, like I say. And bait wise, most of the baits we used was bluey. We also used herring. Um, the bait freezer right there was completely stocked to the top to the max. We took hundreds of bluey with us. But the bait freezer out there was absolutely stocked to the max as well. Um, what else can I say? Uh, I think that's it. But if you do have any questions about going out there, uh, drop them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as much as I can. Or you can DM me on um, me or Tom on our Instagram. That's uh, at Fishing Brothers Wales. And you can also go back and see a few of the catches that we had when we was out there. I definitely, definitely, definitely want to go back there. It was uh, a fantastic trip. I mean, fishing aside, it was like the fishing. Just going to Norway, seeing all that frozen wilderness was just spectacular in itself. But to get out there and do the thing that we love to do most was... And to do it every, basically every single night under the Northern Lights, uh, it was really, really spectacular. And there's never a dull moment. Every time you bait in the water, you're just expecting something major, major to happen. And on a couple of occasions, it did. <laughs>